Hi folks, it's Nate Picos of Blambot, and welcome to the very first Lettering Live, or at least the first one I've recorded. Um, this episode is I Hate Fairyland, Volume 2, Issue 6, Page 3. Uh, what you're going to see in these videos is a sped up version of my lettering process in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I'm not editing anything out, so you'll see me make mistakes. You'll see me second guess myself, uh, maybe change some placements, things like that. Uh, you, this one, you're going to see some creative editing. Uh, this is not something I would typically do with most writers, but I've worked with Scotty Young for so long at this point that he encourages my um, creative input. So on panel one of this page, the script uh, originally only has one balloon with blah, blah, blah in it. And there's a group of people talking, so I took it upon myself to turn that one balloon into three balloons overlapping, just to sort of um, reinforce the chaos that I think he was going for. Um, as far as uh, fonts, on I Hate Fairyland, I use a font called Imaginary Friend that I designed. Um, and on the balloons, you'll see me use an Adobe Illustrator brush stroke that I created that sort of replicates a janky old calligraphy pen nib with a little bit of ink bleed. And you can get uh, both of those on blambot.com, of course. So without further ado, enjoy the show. So I'm going to drop the artwork onto my art layer with an action. It aligns it right to the top left corner of the lettering template. Copying, pasting a bunch of uh, area type objects into each panel. And here's what I was talking about earlier with the blah, blah, blahs. I'm going to turn one of them into three. And you'll note that one at the top is looks like it's right on top of that panel border. That's okay, I'm gonna break the panel border later when I do the balloons. Adding some extra H's to those blahs to give them a more organic look. Trying to make that one a little bit more even, that balloon, by adding an extra H. Like, I normally wouldn't do that with most uh, writer's scripts. I usually, you know, treat them pretty preciously. I don't want to change anything, but Scotty encourages me to make these little changes and, and improve upon the designs. getting rid of that uh, bar to eye that was at the top there, just because I don't want an orphan at the top of my balloon. There's a serif eye there. You'll notice I just changed it to a slash eye. That's because the, the barred eye is only for the personal pronoun eye, as in I'm, I'll, I'd, etc. In comics, everything else should generally be just a slash eye. You'll see me do it again here in a minute with this word wizard as I try to jam this <laughs> very long amount of text into a short area. See right there. And you'll notice I just cut half that balloon um, for space. I'll paste it over here in a minute, right there. Adding some quotes, because I think they were required there. And that, that double dash seemed to work better than a period. Again, these are all changes I wouldn't make with most scripts. This placement gives me a little bit of trouble. You'll see me move it a little bit. There's 
change those barred eyes again that need to be slash eyes because they're not a personal pronoun. Now we're getting on to balloons. So I'm grabbing balloons that I think will fit each um, block of text the best. And I'm just pasting them over kind of where I need them. Start working on those blah, blah, blahs. So I'm cutting them from the balloons layer and pasting them onto a layer beneath the balloon so I can do this. See how the, the balloons actually cover up some of the text? I want them to look like they're all speaking over one another. Ah, here's one of my favorite actions to make off panel tails. I designed this action so I could just click and make a line and it turns that line into the thickness of my tails. There's another one. And another one. And I think there's a couple more on this page. That one has an ugly top, but who cares? No one's going to see it. There you go. And there's another off panel tail. And I'm going to trim all these up a little bit later. I do my first pass here is just getting everything just perfectly set in balloons. And I thought this needed an underline. I thought that would be more fun. So I drew a little squiggly underline with the pen tool and added a calligraphic stroke, resized it, and there you go. Adding my tails. It's quicker just to create tails on the fly for me, and I just grab the tail and the balloon and, and uh, impermanently combine them. Another action that's a single key on my keyboard. You'll see me move this tail and then I can't grab that stupid little control point because sometimes they're, you know, fiddly. There we go. And this tail, you'll notice it breaks through this guy's wand. And I'll go back later and make a clipping mask so it looks like it's behind the wand. Some people uh, grab both their text and the balloon and, and center them on each other. I just kind of do it by eye. A lot of my balloons are very organic in shape, so that center to center alignment doesn't quite work. But I just got used to doing it by eye. I think I come back and change the placement of that balloon because I'm, I'm not happy with it. And this guy's afraid, so that text is supposed to be small in a in a big balloon as if he's sort of whimpering. Change the size of that balloon there. Move it over. I'll break it through the panel border later. So I got rid of everything outside of my artboard that I didn't need with a single click. It's another action on my keyboard. And you notice I added a, an organic uh, brush stroke to the balloons. And this is how we break the panel border. It's literally just making a white rectangle that covers it up. Why make things more complicated? Sometimes I change the stroke to a different, uh, it's a whole set of these uh, brush, these brushes here that I use for this organic outline. Sometimes I change them, I just don't like maybe the way it looks on a particular balloon. Now this one I gotta create that um, clipping mask. So you'll see me do that here. Watch this. So I drop it down and I make a hole in that rectangle. Ta-da! Clipping mask.
You'll notice a lot of these actions that I perform where I join things or create a clipping mask, they all seem to happen in a single click and that's because I use actions. I've created tons and tons of actions that take very complicated or, or processes that are multiple clicks or menu access and I've distilled them down to a single key on the keyboard because I want to focus on the graphic design not on the minutia of you know flipping through menus and things making another clipping mask here you'll see the tip of that guy's crown I want it to pop over the balloon just in that little section right there and there we go break the panel border on that side nudging things over a bit taking a look am I happy with this looking at the uh, you'll notice I just switched the art layer to a hundred percent color versus sort of this muted tone I, I like to letter dirt with the muted tone on because it helps me focus more on the lettering but you'll see me toggle that back and forth and here I am still unhappy with the placement of this balloon still messing around with it I think I end up going with this one. Yeah, I'm gonna add the stroke back to that, that, uh, that brush. Try to find one that I like. Lots of breaking panel borders here. It's just sort of the same process over and over. And I'm sure there's probably a more complicated way to do this, but I like to keep it simple. And here I am doing my final check. Am I happy with everything? Oh, got to drop that behind there. And finally, in my title block, I add the page number and I save the file. And we're done.